This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. The purpose of this series of presentations is to provide education for patients and families affected by dystonia, given the limited resources out there on the internet or in other sources for the layperson. This specific presentation reviews the different treatment modalities for various forms of dystonia, including the use of oral medications, botulinum toxin or Botox injections, as well as various forms of surgery. There are a variety of different oral medications which are used either alone or in combination with botulinum toxin injections or surgical treatment for patients with dystonia. By themselves, oral medications generally are not very effective and are predominantly used in patients with more widespread or severe dystonia. These medications include anticholinergics such as trihexyphenidol, known as artane, and benztropine, known as cogentin. Benzodiazepines include clonazepam, which is also known as clonopin, and diazepam, which is more commonly known as Valium. Baclofen is a commonly used muscle relaxing type medication, which blocks a neurotransmitter known as GABA. Tetrabenazine is a medication which depletes dopamine. Lastly, levodopa is used selectively in patients who have a genetic form of dystonia known as doporesponsive dystonia, in which there is a mutation in the gene important in the production of dopamine in the brain. Selective injection of botulinum toxin weakens the overactive muscles into which it is injected, and as a result, reduces pain, spasm, and abnormal movement, allowing the normally active muscles to bring the affected body part into a more normal posture. This is the treatment of choice for most patients with focal dystonia, such as cervical dystonia and blepharospasm. Reducing the muscle spasm can significantly reduce pain, especially in patients with cervical dystonia. The effect of these injections is not permanent. The effect typically comes on over several days with the peak effect in about two to four weeks. The effect is temporary and wears off in about three months. As a result, patients usually require periodic injections about every three months. Use of botulinum toxin will be discussed in detail in additional presentations. Surgical therapy is typically reserved for patients with substantial disability despite maximal treatment with oral medication and botulinum toxin injections. Surgery may be used in patients with focal dystonia or generalized dystonia, but only a small percent of patients with focal dystonia require surgical treatment. For patients with generalized dystonia, Brain surgery involving implantation of electrodes into the brain to block abnormal signals, known as deep brain stimulation, is typically the treatment of choice. For patients with focal dystonia, deep brain stimulation may be used, but also peripheral surgery in which the overactive muscles are cut or the nerves supplying these muscles are cut to reduce the abnormal contractions may be used. Peripheral surgery is more commonly used in patients who have severe blepharospasm and cervical dystonia. Speech, physical, and occupational therapy may be helpful for selected patients. Speech therapy is occasionally helpful as an additional treatment in addition to botulinum toxin injections in patients who have spasmodic dysphonia or dystonia involving the vocal cords. Physical therapy is often used to teach patients a stretching program to improve pain associated with muscle spasms and also to stretch out the overactive muscles to prevent secondary orthopedic deformity and disability. Occupational therapy may be helpful with dystonia that involves the limbs and affects the gait and hand function. I hope that you have found this presentation to be useful and educational. I hope that you will tune in for additional presentations in which we will review in depth the presentation as well as treatments for various specific forms of dystonia, including cervical dystonia and blepharospasm.